दूसरे दिन के पहले सेशन में हृदय से स्वागत करते हैं आफ्टर द इवेंट फुल डे यस्टे टुडे इज गोइंग टू बी अनदर एक्साइटिंग डे ऑफ टेक्निकल सेशंस कहते हैं कि समुद्र मंथन से अमृत की प्राप्ति हुई थी और यकीनन यहाँ जो डेलीब्रेशन्स हो रहे हैं विचारों के आदान प्रदान हो रहे हैं विचारों के मंथन हो रहे हैं हम श्योर कि इससे हम सबको और इस देश को अमृत की प्राप्ति होगी वी बिगिन दिस ब्राइट मॉर्निंग विद फर्स्ट सेशन फायर साइट चैट ऑन डिवेलपिंग एन इको सिस्टम फॉर हेल्थ केयर ड्रोन डिलीवरीज स्वास्थ्य सुरक्षा के ड्रोन डिलीवरी के लिए इको सिस्टम का विकास करना हमारे आज के होस्ट हैं श्री विघ्नेश संथानम लीड एरोस्पेस एंड ड्रोन्स वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमिक फोरम ही इज जॉइंट बाय इलेस्ट्रस पैनल वी हैव अमंगस्ट अस वेल नोन रिस्पेक्टेड डॉक्टर रणदीप गुलेरिया जी हम आपका हृदय से स्वागत करते हैं माननीय आप का परिचय आप परिचय के मोहताज नहीं हैं आपको दुनिया जानती है डायरेक्टर ऑल इंडिया इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिकल साइंसेस न्यू दिल्ली आपका हम हृदय से स्वागत करते हैं माननीय आपसे निवेदन है कृपया मंच पर पधारें श्री आर रामकृष्णन आई ए एस सीनियर डेप्यूटी डायरेक्टर जनरल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन आई सी एम आर रिस्पेक्टेड श्री आर रामकृष्णन जी आई रिक्वेस्ट यू ऑल्सो सर टू प्लीज जॉइन अस ऑन द स्टेज श्री देबाशीष बैनर्जी हेड इनोवेशन एंड स्ट्रेटजी नोवाटिस डॉक्टर इमरान सुबहान चेयर गवर्नेंस एंड पॉलिसी सोसाइटी फॉर इमरजेंसी मेडिसिन अपोलो हॉस्पिटल्स श्री विक्रम सिंह सी ई ओ एंड फाउंडर टेक ईगल श्री अंशुल शर्मा को फाउंडर रेड विंग लैब्स सभी जिनका मैंने नाम लिया है कृपया मंच पर पधारें और इसके पहले कि हम ये सेशन शुरू करें ब्राइट मॉर्निंग को और भी ज़्यादा ऊर्जामय करने के लिए हम चाहते हैं हमारे गेस्ट के लिए एक बार ज़ोरदार तालियों से उनका स्वागत करें सो नाउ आई हैंड ओवर द फ्लोर टू द होस्ट श्री विघ्नेश संथानम थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम एंड वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरी वन हेयर एंड वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल आर ऑडियंस Uh, at the outset, I would like to specially thank the uh, Drone Federation of India for hosting, putting up such a fantastic uh, event over the past two days. Uh, I think we've had a lot of interactions, uh, you know, and a lot of things have been discussed uh, very extensively, and we are hopeful that it will come to fruition. So, today we have a very uh, illustrious lineup of speakers from a host of sectors. Uh, we have, uh, you know, leading healthcare service providers, leading pharma company. Uh, if i could start with uh, dr guleria uh, of aims uh, sir the country has seen numerous uh, healthcare delivery experiments over the past uh, you know 12 to 16 months so as a healthcare professional uh, yourself who's leading one of the premier healthcare agencies in the country how confident are you of uh, you know procuring these services of engaging drones in what you do point 1 and two is if say a hospital setup had to be upgraded to drone enable it what would uh, your recommendations be So good morning, and thank you. Uh, I, I'm audible, I presume. Um, I think the country is actually at the cusp of a drone revolution, and that drone revolution is also going to be there in the healthcare uh, sector. The opportunities are huge, and there is a lot of confidence among healthcare work professionals that this would be something that would be useful, not only in the rural area where it will be a game changer, but also in urban areas. where you could use drones for various activities right from transportation of blood trauma services a drone could actually help in managing trauma and a patient who may have had a heart attack by delivering a defibrillator device and if you have a, let's say a, a, to- a walkie talkie then the bystander could be guided as to what is to be done to manage a patient by the time the ambulance arrives so there is a lot of scope that is there the challenges are the, do we do we, we have, the health sector would want drones which are well let's say medical speci- specific if there's a lot of vibration in the device the blood may sort of get lysed and the cold chain needs to be maintained if you're transporting samples or an organ so whether we can have let's say drones which are looking at all of these issues in terms of the health sector but i think we are at a stage where this could be a game changer and really help the the health ecosystem in uh, sort of you know where we have our let's say gaps 
in terms of laboratories, in terms of the uh, human resources, all of this can actually be filled by using drone services in a very efficient manner. Thank you. I think so. If I have to sum that up in one line, uh, the technology is available, everything is there for that confidence level to hit, to be driven home. It needs a little bit more of maturity given, uh, given what the technology offers. So if I can bring in Sri uh, Ramakrishnan uh, from the ICMR. Uh, sir, you, uh, the ICMR of course has been uh, conducting some very uh, useful trials, especially in northeastern India. There are also uh, you know, trials that you have planned in, uh, in, in Andaman and Nicobar. These are very, very rural parts of India, like what uh, Sir mentioned. So if you can take us through what the scope of uh, or your thought process was before you designed this program and uh, what were some of your key learnings, like you know, Sir mentioned about some gaps that could potentially be possible. Did you, did you experience that? Can you take us through the challenges and the scope and your learnings? Uh, thank you, Sandhanam. Uh, the respected Dr. Uh, Director uh, Ames, distinguished participants. Uh, very good morning to everyone. Um, actually, uh, having worked in a state like Nagaland, we have experienced lots of difficulties, even in sending the uh, vaccinations or any drugs during a normal time. A routine immunization program also, we were finding difficulties. The northeastern states, we were finding the difficulties in uh, reaching the drugs to the sub-centers or the community health centers uh, in the rural areas, especially the bordering areas, Myanmar uh, or other, uh, other countries. Uh, and especially during a rainy season, we have rains nearly five months, starting from uh, June till September. Uh, many districts, even villages, you know, they are cut off. So during those occasions, sometimes even we request the help of army for dropping uh, food and the essential items and the army also helped uh, they came to our rescue in dropping uh, food and the essential commodities in such a situation when the mandate was given to icmr for uh, delivering the vaccines to the remote areas and we we thought of the model of uh, drone using drone technology and we successfully implemented in uh, 20 locations 20 you can say 20 sub centers health units in manipur and uh, nagaland and actually, we have to thank both the states, the health departments, for helping our ICMR team in successfully implementing this uh, drone technology. And uh, basing, uh, based on that experience, we have come out with the uh, guidelines how to use the drone technology in delivering uh, vaccines or even the basic essential drugs in the remote areas. And we also you know, uh, come out with a, a training module for healthcare personnels how to use this technology. <coughs> And uh, our uh, director, uh, honorable director, he will be releasing the uh, books, to these two books uh, prepared by the ICMR. And I have to thank my ICMR team, also scientists, who have come out with the, uh, the innovative idea. With the help of our startup companies, representatives are here. They also helped us in using this technology. Of course, this technology is a very innovative idea. This is in line with the, our honorable PM's Atmanirbar uh, program. And uh, if you successfully implement uh, this drone technology, it's not only during emergency, even uh, during a normal course of time, we can reach uh, essential uh, drugs or uh, during a uh, rainy season, sub epidemic, uh, sub something breaks out. Then we can send even uh, you know, immediate requirements to the far flung areas when the people are affected by landslides or flood. So this technology, the state government, uh, we have given the idea, it is up to the state governments and the startup companies, how to improve on the technology, how to, how to, and to make it uh, functional or operational during, even during a normal time, other than the emergency times. Thank you. Thanks. Um, one question that keeps doing the rounds with startups is, is it uh, cheaper than the on-ground uh, uh, methods or the traditional ways of doing it? So given that you went through a very organized tendering process, you came at a price point, is there, uh, what were some of the parameters that you thought of? Uh, is there an equivalent here? Uh, how will you justify that uh, drones in the long term are more cost effective, is that something you can speak about? So when we use the drone technology only on occasions during emergency or uh, yeah, it will be a little costly. But we have to work out, I think our team also can uh, help the scientific team or research team or the startup companies how to reduce the cost so that uh, the drone technology can be used even during normal times. Yeah, technology, technological innovation is required. I think we can, uh, ICMR can help all the necessary help to the startup companies are the state governments how to reduce the cost so that the technology can be used during normal occasions. 
or during uh, our operational you know health centers uh, normal functioning of health centers we can make use of the technology for any of the services rendered by the state government or by the central government uh, yeah thank you uh, if i can bring in uh, vikram from tech eagle uh, vikram do you uh, uh, echo especially the last point around uh, the price points is that something you agree with and as a startup what is it that you look at what is in it for you uh, thank you vignesh so uh, uh, good morning everyone uh, this is vikram founder and ceo of tech eagle uh, this particular point uh, needs to be looked at from a holistic uh, point of view uh, it cannot be compared directly between uh, point a to point b uh, ground transportation cost versus a drone delivery cost it needs to be in tandem with that how many centers what kind of operations what kind of uh, infra we are putting in place to run current uh, logistics versus when we will do with the drones what kind of infra we are putting and then uh, are we able to centralize it are we able to reduce the capex opex so entirely capex opex uh, uh, in both these situation needs to be compared not only the ground logistics cost so if we scale these things let's say at a state level and if we uh, replenish let's say 20% of the existing ground logistics with the drone then we will be able to match up the cost of the entire uh, uh, logistics capex and opex which is currently happening with the uh, uh, ground logistics so if we are all the customers all the stakeholders are looking from that transformative point of view it is not only that we are replacing a rider or a van we are creating a transformative uh, uh, model with the drones and that will actually be uh, the future and that will be the changing a lot of dynamics so if you are looking from that perspective uh, then yes uh, it makes a lot of sense and then the prices right now will be still little higher but as we go along our all electronics prices will come down uh, as uh, atmanirbhar bharat and as a industry we are growing very rapidly so even uh, the prices will come down for the components and entire aircraft and then uh, the cost will be cheaper than the ground logistics which is also ev so now the uh, comparison not between the normal logistics but the ev based logistics on ground and uh, uh, then drone so uh, initially we need to adopt and absorb some cost uh, different stakeholders needs to absorb uh, to actually give that initial push to the drone delivery industry which is required thanks vikram uh, so if i can invite devashish so i think in summary what he's mentioned is that uh, uh, most of the activity will involve writing off uh, the capex so definitely there is an infrastructural push that is needed and uh, novartis of course if with the liberalized regime will be one of the biggest uh, agents of change it potentially could be so in your view if you can take us through uh, you know how novartis plans to engage drones uh, and if you can also take us through your arogya parivar program where this is a good fit sure uh, thank you vignesh uh, really appreciate uh, i i would like to really start with something that is very uh, very importantly said in the innovation world we say uh, you know it takes a couple of people to take things from 0 to 1 but then it takes a village to go from 1 to n what it essentially means is that you know when you do not have anything let's say when there was no drone you know technology maybe it took a couple of scientists maybe it took a couple of really smart you know techies to build up that you know technology that's going from 0 to 1 the technology is ready now but then to implement it finally that is to scale it up to the level that you actually want to scale up which i think all the eminent uh, you know members here are speaking about is to take from that product from 1 to n and for that you need a village you need the ecosystem and uh, first of all thanks uh, to the drone you know federation of india for organizing something as big as large as this uh, we certainly have been able to get the village you know together so that's a good you know starting point uh right from uh, the prime minister's uh, you know honorable uh, you know prime minister sir to almost like the last employee of a startup i am sure everybody is uh, you know motivated uh the big question is how uh, you know novartis or uh, arogya parivar for example we we also believe as uh, you know novartis we believe a lot that if we have to really solve our healthcare issues that we are seeing alone not one organization will ever be able to do that so to do this right we have to build ecosystem around this and arogya parivar as you you know mention is a great uh, initiative in our mind where it's basically focusing on uh, patient access especially to the rural uh, you know parts of the world it is focusing on building up infrastructure 
developing employment, local employment, awareness about disease and things like that. And we truly believe that, uh, you know, some of the, like, like all of you have already said, I think yesterday also it was spoken about, uh, difficult terrains, floods, uh, other things are making it very difficult for us to really do that outreach kind of a program for some areas. So can drone be a technology that can be used to really help solve that? Uh, obviously a lot of challenges that uh, Sir said and you mentioned about cost and all of that, we have to obviously figure it out what, what it exactly means on paper to, to make it work, but that would be a good starting point when of course the futuristic, when almost everything will be done through the drones like EV machines that we are coming right now, those are the kind of things that we will look into in the future. Yep, definitely we need to workshop that and what is emerging is definitely an infrastructural push. So if I'd like to, I'd like to bring in Anshul from Red Wing Labs. So, uh, in your, your view, Anshul, what is the ideal scenario from an infrastructure standpoint for a, for a drone to op for a drone corridor? For example, leveled land around a hospital or verti ports. What is it? If you can take us through that full picture. Sure. Um, no, thank you so much, Vignesh, for that question. Um, so, by introduction, my name is Anshul Sharma. I'm the co-founder of Red Wing. Uh, we're like a drone healthcare logistics startup. So. Um, the, the reality is that this space of drones in healthcare um, is is not completely new, right? It, it got started first in Rwanda um, in 2016. Now, if we look at how Rwanda scaled up, um, that they started with 21 hospitals in 2016, right? Um, with one hub. Now, and now the country of Rwanda, 80% of the national blood supply is basically flown by drones on an everyday basis, right? Uh, similar is the case with Ghana as well. So, uh, the, the scaling up process, how it has happened, at least um, by looking at, uh, you know, the uh, programs um, or the deliveries that have happened in healthcare so far, is that if you can come in closer to the district health hospital and start delivering, let's say, start with diagnostics to the nearest PHCs, right? What that does is that it allows the rural uh, population living closer to the sub-centers and the PHCs to not come to the district hospital for getting diagnostic tests, right? So start with the diagnostic element, then layer it up with, uh, then as you're building confidence, basically then um, offer emergency parts. So it's, the, the way is that, we are technology providers, we can provide any sort of technology, right? Um, the healthcare system needs to continuously load that network with different healthcare products to essentially solve that problem part. So first you can solve, uh, you know, reducing uh, patient travel times. It's really, uh, it's literally near 100 kilometers that um, people living near PHCs and sub-centers have to travel to the main district hospitals, you can reduce that immediately, right? After that is like that element that you can now transport emergency care. After that is when you can transport, uh, and hope is that, you know, in, if we continue on this track, then we can enable blood in PHCs because you can then deliver blood. So blood is not you think about it right now. I would say that blood we think about, you know, maybe hopefully six, 12 months later, or maybe 18 months later, but yeah, that's the way. I think. Great, uh, Dr. Imran. Uh, if you can sort of reflect on that, and as an emergency medicine uh, specialist, one is how are you going to tie uh, telemedicine to drones, and two, can you share an experience where, as handling an emergency medicine case, if you had a drone, the situation would have changed. Can you can you share that? Uh, yeah. Uh, <coughs> sir, my name is Dr. Imran. I'm a consultant and head of emergency at Apollo Hospital, Hyderabad. Uh, I think the drone technology is now uh, something how internet was there in 1995. Uh, uh, and how internet spread and this drone technology can make a huge impact on uh, health care, especially emergency care. Uh, wherever emergencies happen, which includes lacks of highways, towns, uh, villages which are there, every single point the drone technology will work. So just to give you some examples uh, within emergency care, we would like to deliver various drugs immediately. For example, someone who's having chest pain in a remote location, you need to deliver aspirin or you need to deliver uh, remote telehealth monitoring devices, which can give feedback and instantly in the medical care can start at that point. Uh, commercial pharmacy deliveries, uh, we, you have already proven that you can carry emergency equipment including defibrillators, uh, lab testing devices where a person can do his own check of blood sugars, various tests which can be done on site. We can deliver oxygen canisters, first aid kits can be given immediately to a, a 
location. Uh, advanced life support kits which can help other healthcare workers, nurses, paramedics who are on site who are attending to an emergency, you can give them. Uh, blood products, you have already demonstrated blood products. Uh, um, more things are supporting medical care during ambulance transport. In, in our cities here, ambulances always get stuck in a location and they may fall short of a lot of life-saving drugs equipment and in these drones are what will provide that second layer of uh, support there. Um, something which has not been spoken so much in the media is the AV communications technology which can exist in a drone. And you can send a drone to a remote location, a village, anywhere which is difficult to access. And you can get the specialist to talk to the patients. So this is something which, uh, which has not been so spoken so much about. And as emergency doctors, just speaking to the patient makes a huge difference and we can at least uh, get the person who's close by to render some first aid or uh, uh, other things. So imagine drone swarms which can uh, deliver emergency care. So it's, it's a huge thing. One, just one specific case, if you ask me, we had a road traffic accident where uh, you had two people who were stuck inside and it took a long time for the paramedics to extricate them out. And a video feed of that would have made a huge difference to understand what was going on on that site and send more doctors or more uh, uh, people. So every day these things are happening and drone technology can, can transform this whole emergency care in India, especially public health care and our villages and towns. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Dr. Gulera, if I can uh, bring you back, uh, uh, can you reflect on some of the things that you've heard from the startups, one mainly around the infrastructure and two from the healthcare side to if you have to scale, uh, you know, would you recommend more POCs? What should be done to increase the confidence of the procurer here? So I think like it was said that we, we need to go to the next level starting from a small group to the village, as if I, if I may use your terminology. So, we need to see two things. One is how can we scale up drones in the healthcare sector, both in terms of the manufacturing part and in terms of the utility part. And how can we do it in a stepwise manner so that it is more and more acceptable to everyone. It's going to be a game changer, but there has to be, ex the user acceptance is very, very important. And I think you will also need to look at the infrastructure. You will have to have a central area which can do the monitoring, you will have to have some sort of licensing procedure. There's also a medical legal aspect. And at the same time, you will also need to see, do you have enough trained people who can operate the drones from that point of view in the health sector. Uh, the other thing that I think is, when we're looking at cost, I think I still feel it will be cost effective because of the fact that it's not only the cost of the, the operation, but the time saved, the lives that you saved. So when you start looking at it in a holistic manner, it will turn out to be cost effective if you start looking at the time saved, lives that could be saved and various modalities which could be useful. For example, as far as blood samples are concerned, this is something that we're already working on in our uh, National Cancer Institute in Jhajjar. Could we have a central core laboratory? We have a central robotic core laboratory which can do a large number of testing. Can drones be used to collect samples from the surrounding districts? and be able to take the sample there and it could be done. If some sort of a technology like that is practical, then it will become cost effective because you have one central lab which is able to provide cover to a large area. It could be at a district level, it could be at a state level. And if you then start looking at the, sc uh, the scale of things, it would become cost effective. Similar is the example for blood and blood products. You won't need that much of cold storage and uh, space to really keep blood in various areas. You could have a central area where blood is kept. Whenever it's required at a district hospital, at a smaller center, it can be sent immediately. And that way your storage is better, your blood collection is in a more systematic manner, and it can be delivered immediately to various areas as and when it is required. Same goes through, like we said, for trauma or for any, any acute emergency. Using various drone technologies, you can actually uh, lift patients also from a trauma site, but at the same time provide care uh, using uh, audio-visual and things like that. So I think once we bring it up to scale, once we start looking at manufacturing at a larger level, the cost will come down and it will actually turn out to be cost effective. Vikram, do you agree? And uh, point one. And uh, two is, uh, since you mentioned about CapEx, it's quite a heavy lift on a startup like you. Uh, so how will you, you know, scale up to the, to the middle mile? What do you need to make things easier for you? Uh, thank you, sir. So I think even I agree uh, uh, with sir. So 
infrastructural cost needs to be, I mean, so the drone uh, technology as a solution, so it's a tool, right? Ultimately, what matters is that what it is solving and how it is solving. So as a tool, end-to-end uh, -to -end drone delivery, we need to make it more efficient, that, that it takes less capex and less opex. So how even at Tech Eagle we are building it is in a centralized drone delivery network way that even to take off and land, our drones have a vertical takeoff and landing uh, uh, capable. Uh, so they require only 5 meter by 5 meter space to take off. To land or to deliver items, they do not require even uh, a 5 meter by 5 meter. They can winch it, they can uh, release it, they can drop it. So this entire infrastructural cost which is uh, going to be uh, going into the capex part, existing warehouses of the distribution network be it a healthcare uh, i mean the government organization or a private organization can be trans uh, uh, transformed into the drone delivery hub or a warehouse the storage and then the takeoff location can be that as a central location where the uh, diagnostic uh, uh, laboratory is there the storage of the uh, blood is there all the medicine is there and then everything can be distributed from that uh, uh, center and everything can be collected there as a single hub. So capex will be brought down uh, at a very low though it is a capex so it can be absorbed by the existing infrastructure with the little transformation into the same thing. So this is how we need to tackle that and then uh, comes the capex of the drones also because drones which are delivering items that needs also uh, to take care of. So those can also be taken care by the there are uh, various ways uh, all the uh, founders and the startups needs to raise funds to uh, run their businesses anyways. So that, that needs to be solved in uh, multiple ways. But as a uh, procurer or as a customer, as a consumer, people need to uh, uh, look at it in a hybrid mode. That how we can transform existing infra and uh, what all new things needs to be built in and how that cost can be divided with the startups as well as the uh, uh, consumer or the middle, middle party. So we can achieve those middle steps from let's say 1 uh, to 10 and 10 to 100 before we go to lakhs. So that's how I think uh, uh, we are building it and that's how we look at it. Great. Any comments or any re any so reflection? I would, tend, I would tend to agree. I would say that we could look at something like an Amazon-like model. You have a warehouse where you could have drugs, you could have other capacities, and the drone then takes off from there and delivers drugs or whatever is required as per the need on a regular basis. And I'm sure it will be cost effective. Great. So I'll, I'll actually bring in Anshul once again here. Uh, so there's, if we have to realize this hub spoke and sub spoke uh, model, which, which form factor is ideally suited for this? Is it the hybrid VTOLs? If yes, what is the uh, lifespan of a VTOL? If you're looking at a bike for five years versus a drone for five years, which is what you hear every day probably, uh, you know, when will the drone become cost effective? Will it last that long? Yeah, so I think uh, like Vikram mentioned, basically hybrid VTOLs. Um, so the difference between the African continent and the Indian continent was that since you have to do a two-way, um, a fixed, a one-way mode of delivery cannot, you cannot start with a one-way mode of delivery, you need to start with a two-way mode of transportation, right? And at the same time, you need to have that longer range. So one, in terms of vehicle type, I think hybrid VTOLs uh, is, is making quite a bit of sense from at least the Indian context, right? Um, second, in terms of that cost effectiveness factor, see, I think the reality is that um, what you're looking at is basically a bar chart in which you have capex, wastage, storage, uh, transportation costs, right? These four or five key cost layers. So you can say before drone intervention, after drone intervention. What you'll find out is that I don't think that drone, perhaps in the next two to three years, part will don't, don't need to be cheaper than traditional transportation as well, right? Because you're not, if, if the goal is to reduce costs of healthcare logistics, then we're going in a different direction. The goal is to Im improve the quality of care, right? So uh, the only part is that if you're looking at the, the before drone intervention, after drone intervention, end-to-end -end landed supply chain cost, sh I would say broadly should be more or less be the same. But in the with drone intervention, you would have increased quality of care. You would have changed so many systems. Right? I'll just basically double click on, let's say, blood, since we're touching on that, right? So blood, when you centralize, um, if we have the component separation facility net to, next to the blood, that means all the products that you deliver uh, to 
uh, you know, hospitals, they can be platelets, they can be plasmas, right? Now, there is that complication um, of uh, cross-matching in India, which I think we'll, we'll also have to learn um, how do we get solved over here. Um, but uh, just doing centralizing and, and delivering it on demand uh, will bring down that number of wastage. I think it's about 15, 20%, if I'm not wrong, in terms of the national blood wastage year on year. Um, and that itself will be able to sort of justify that premium of drone parts. So I don't think that, uh, you know, uh, drone, we should accept, ex expect the drone technology to come anywhere close to the cost of bike transportation. Yep, uh, Devashish again, in corporate parlance, after what you've heard, how will you define success here? When you uh, on the cost? Uh, all round. Yeah, I mean, uh, overall, uh, you know, to be honest with you, whether there is a warehouse, whether the cost comes on, you know, down or not, I think from our, you know, perspective, we need to see healthcare, you know, healthcare perspective, what's the success that it looks like. In my mind, if we can, I'm just, you know, thinking aloud, in my mind, if we can, for our primary healthcare centers, which sort of caters to about eight to 10, you know, villages, if we can solve that last mile, you know, delivery, where we are not talking about bikes, we are not talking about Jeeps, we are not talking about any of that. Uh, we have the primary healthcare center, which had something like a launch pad or something, and the rest of the eight, 10 uh, villages are being taken care of from a patient access perspective, from the samples perspective, from emergency medicines perspective, all of that being taken care of uh, by the use of the drone, you know, technology, and we are not, you know, discussing how does the cost look like because we have solved that. I think that's how uh, would be the real, you know, success for all of us. Great. Any, any final comments uh, from uh, Sri Ramakrishna? Yeah, I want to say a few things. Uh, what I thought was drones can be used only during remote areas. But uh, from our discussions, what uh, I can understand is that even in uh, metro cities where we have, you know, often uh, traffic jams, we can use uh, uh, drones regularly for uh, even for transporting life-saving equipments, life-saving medicines, even organs required for transplantation, uh, blood, uh, uh, like somebody stuck in the road, we can send blood also. So these kind of things, we scale up the operations of uh, drone usages. I think the cost will uh, definitely will come down. The companies as well as the scientists, we can also help them how to reduce the operational cost. I think it will be a good opportunity for the startups. We can make use of the technology for our uh, daily use also. That's what uh, I could advise the startup companies. Thank you. Uh, any final comments, Dr. Guleria? Any comments from you? So I think, uh, like we've been saying, that this is the time to see how we can improve the healthcare system and provide last mile delivery also. Also, how can we use technology to really whether it's for diagnosis, whether it's for acute emergency, or whether it's for delivery of drugs, how can we really make it more robust, especially in rural India, or in areas where you have issues of transport because of traffic jams and things, drones will definitely will be a game changer. So that's where we really need to look at it. I do agree that it has to be a stepwise process. We can't really do this overnight. And we have to really work on building confidence and also seeing how it works in our ecosystem and then gradually take it up to the next level. Yeah, any final comments from you? Or? No, uh, I, think, I think we have said, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, enough of this. But uh, one thing I know uh, Tech Eagle, like Vikram and Ankush uh, spoke about, one of the things, I mean, I'm not, uh, you know, we should make, I think we should make ourselves more aware of how the technology is improving. Uh, so let's say the life of the drone, you know, is that improving? And what are we doing from our R&D standpoint to really make that happen, right? That, I think, will build confidence in uh, healthcare uh, ecosystem and whatever we are trying to do here. Because the chances of failure is pretty much nil for our kind of emergency, uh, you know, services. So, uh, you know, uh, if, if, let's say, magnetic fields, electric wires, these are causing problems, are there technologies that is coming up which can jam those or still work? around that, you know, things like that, and I don't know if enough is happening, maybe I'm not aware, but the more we make, uh, I think, the ecosystem aware of such things that's happening, I believe more the confidence will start to build up as well, and more such use cases will start to crop up as well, because we are hungry on really solving our, you know, patient needs. Yes. Vikram, with that, sorry? That we are, if 
Finch, may just add, we're, for example, we're looking at can drones be used to transport radionuclide material from the point of view of, because they have a short half-life. Hmm. But you need to have the infrastructure in place so that it's safe and it doesn't cause a radiation hazard. So all of those things have to come into the next generation drones, if I put it that way. As we move forward, temperature control, vibration, uh, other hazards which are there with various uh, products uh, which are blood or uh, serum related. That I think is something that we also need to address as we look at drones in the healthcare system. We come quickly. Uh, definitely I would agree and how we are building uh, solutions is uh, from a holistical point of view that it has to be safe and reliable at the end of the day. Uh, carrying uh, whether healthcare product or any other product, uh, we are having uh, manned aviation also along with us. We have people on ground and density is quite high in India uh, uh, anyways. So pro the product kind of that we are building uh, has to be long range has to deliver good payload as sir mentioned in a cold chain environment where you can uh, track it and maintain it and then safety and reliability is uttermost. So even if one thing fails at every single component level and at, at, at every technology level, we have to have redundancies. And that's how uh, even the recent product which we launched Vertiplane X3 have that kind of capabilities and we are evolving every day. On the other end, uh, on whether what is the cost of saving one life? We need to look at from that perspective and how we are building technical is also on demand. It has to be, it has to be a network of drones which are delivering different items to save lives and to improve lives. To, to improve lives, we are improving the accessibility of the healthcare logistics basically in our uh, rural areas as well as the urban areas. So we have to see from the holistical point of view and then uh, uh, yeah, with the heads down we are building the technology also and then deploying at a uh, little larger scale now. Thank you. Right. Uh, I think we have time for uh, one line comment from you and uh, Anshul. Yeah. Uh, we can start with you. Yeah, I think uh, we should keep our focus that the patient is the main goal. The patient is the uh, final customer. And we have to make whatever services we give uh, affordable to that person and at a high quality. And I think uh, the drone industry and the healthcare industry need to talk much more than what we are currently doing to get that goal going. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I would just like to end with um, it's very encouraging that if we track this ecosystem nine months right specifically drone logistics in healthcare uh, started in September uh, with medicines on the sky program in Telangana and you know month on month and then ICMR program and then so on and multiple other programs are also going on so it's very encouraging that month on month we are able to solve all of these issues and you know um, Kudos to the uh, healthcare eco ecosystem for um, allowing um, companies like us uh, and others as well to sort of build into the space and understand these problems which we can solve. So thank you. Great. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time and for the excellent insights. Before we part, we have a small report launch by ICMR. If I can invite the ICMR team over. Book launch. Kashyup Babu, sir. As a token of our immense respect and to honor our esteemed guests, uh, I would like to request Sri Vignesh Santhanam to kindly present mementos to honorable esteemed guests. Sabse pehle, Dr. Randeep Guleria ji ko. Ye smriti chinn hai, drone mahotsav ka, jo drone ke hi roop mein hai. Sukha di aade aaj ke is karekshram ki. और अब रिस्पेक्टेड श्री आर रामाकृष्णन को भी ये मेमेंटो भेंट करें और हमारे सभी जो मेहमान गेस्ट स्पीकर्स हैं उनका सम्मान करें इन्हें 
मैं मेंटो प्रदान करके श्री देवाशीष बैनर्जी डॉक्टर इमरान सुभान श्री विक्रम सिंह श्री अंशुल शर्मा श्री विघ्नेश संथानम जी को हम सभी की तरफ से इस ड्रोन फेस्टिवल की तरफ से मेमेंटो बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद 